Once again, salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي لا يبلغ مذهته القائلون ولا يعدي حقه المجتهدون ولا يحصي نعماءه العادون ولا يدركه بعد الهمم ولا يناله غوص الفتن الذي بعدا فلا يرى وقربا فشهدا نجوى تبارك وتعالى وصلى الله على اشرف مريته وسيد رسله وخاتم انبيائه ومبلغ رسالته وبشير نعمته ونذير نعمته العبد المؤيد والرسول المسدد المصطفى الأمجد أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين الغر الميامين الذين أذهب الله أنهم الرجس وتهرهم تطهيرا ولعنة الله الأبدية الدائمة على أعدائهم أعداء الله من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الحكيم وهو أصدق القائلين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولكل أمة أجل فإذا جاء أجلهم لا يستخرون الساعة ولا يستقدمون صدق الله العلي العظيم صلوات صلى الله عليك يا أبا عبد الله وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك السلام عليك يا أيها الإمام الغريب المظلوم الوهيد العطشان 
بارند کربن و بلا صلی اللہ علیہ کیا مولا یا سید الحرا یا ابا عبد اللہ السلام حسین والا علی ابن الحسین والا اولاد الحسین وعلى أصحاب الحسين All together السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن وعلى أولاد الحسين السلام على الحسين وعلى وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين الذين بذلوا مهجهم دون الحسين ورحمة الله وبركاته صلوات على محمد وآل محمد Respected brothers and sisters, lovers, followers of the school of Karbala. Last night we started our discussion regarding our topic. Karbala as manifestation and apex of core Quranic concepts and last night we referred to that particular verse as headline unwan headline of Imam Hussain's movement which Imam Hussain himself recited on his departure from Medina When Imam Hussain left Medina, he read that verse. فَخَرَجَ مِنْهَا خَائِفًا يَتَرَقَّبُ قَالَ رَبِّ نَجِّنِي مِنَ الْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ Referring to that verse of Surah Mubarak, a qisas about Nabi Musa, that when he, out of the fear of Pharaoh and operation he came out of the city he came out of Egypt and Quran says Kharaja minha Musa came out of it khaifan while he was afraid yataraqqabu he was vigilant qal while he was saying rabbe oh my lord najini Rescue me, liberate me from oppressive nation. This is really very important. And I in detail discuss this issue. What is the connection of Imam Hussain's journey, movement and 
نبی موسا علیہ السلاۃ والسلام ہاؤ امام حسین کنیکٹڈ ہز مشن ٹو موومنٹ آف امبیا ان دا لائٹ آف دس قرآنک ورس ناٹ اونلی دس وین ہی ریچ ٹو مکہ ہی ریڈ دا سیم ورس وچ نبی موسا ریڈ اور وچ ریفرنس ٹو نبی موسا ایٹ دا ارائیول آف دا سٹی آف مدیا اینڈ آئی گیو دا بیک گراؤنڈ that Musa and Pharaoh are symbolic in Quran for the clash of truth and falsehood which is always there which is always there always there is haq and there is batil there is truth and there is falsehood and they are in clash and conflict نتلو علیہ کا نبع فرعون نبع موسا و فرعون بالحق لقوم یومنون ریفرنگ ٹو دیٹ این ہو واز فرعون ان فرعون علا فی العرس فرعون واز ایروگنٹ فرعون ڈیوائڈڈ ہز پیپل فرعون اپریسڈ ہز پیپل فرعون کھلڈ ہز پیپل and fasa faraon promoted fasad kana min al mufsidin and musa stood against all that and husain's movement is also against arrogance of bani umayya against corruption of bani umayya against policy of dividing ummah into classes based upon racism based upon status based upon i don't know a lot of different backgrounds they divided but mainly gradually they introduced the culture of arab and non arab racial racial discrimination and through this division they could manage to control and manipulate and imam hussein referred to that yuzabbih abna'ahum it is symbolic of pharaoh that they were merciless they were brutal and imam hussein referred to bani umayya also brutal toward their opponents killing them slaughtering them treating men with the worst of tortures and killings and women also with the worst type of abuse including sexual abuse or yastahi nisaahum and then of course imam hussain want to say by reciting this verse that pharaoh with that power with that might who was so high and arrogant that say ana rabbukum al ala did not survive did not sustain again musa why because ultimate promise of allah is wa nuridu an namunna ala alladhina istuzafu fil az allah promised that haq will win truth will win therefore if you remember i said in the start of that verse liqaumin yu'minun this story is for the believers those who do not believe those who look only in dunya they will not be able to understand musa and pharaoh husain and yazid's story liqaumin yu'minun but those who believe in allah's might and power they will believe that husain is victorious musa is victorious Pharaoh and Yazid and Umayyads are supposed to be defeated. And I explain to you how victory of Hussein, how victory of Hussein, how Hussein is victorious continuously until it reaches to ultimate victory. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad.
today i would like to draw your attention to another core concept of quran which manifested in karbala which manifested in will and you know action of sayyid ash-shuhada aba abdullah imam hussein alayhi salatu wassalam and this is let me quickly explain to you the concept first of all quran speaks about responsibilities and accountabilities kullukum mas'ul mas'ul means accountable quran repeatedly overwhelmingly raises the issue of accountability you are accountable for your actions this is quranic core concept insan mas'ul yani every human being is responsible accountable for his actions you are responsible my brother my sister for what you do you are responsible for anything you do any action you take you oppress you kill you help you are generous you are merciful or you are brutal or you are cruel or you are stealing or you are protecting or you are breaking all 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 everything every action of you is accountable this is a very important concept in quran faman ya'mal misqala dharratin khairan yara wa man ya'mal misqala dharratin sharran yara whoever will do a smallest zarra means particle equal to particle of good will see his good he will see the result of his good what he did you give 2 rand 1 rand 5 cent 1 cent sadaqa you will see you will see wa man ya'mal misqala zarratin sharran yara and if you and me do even a smallest of sharr and evil and wrong we will be able to see there is absolutely no doubt about it mas'uliya in quran you know responsibility accountability we are not free we not you know we are not free to do whatever we feel to do and no one will ask us and no one will question us and no one will challenge us no no that is not the situation mas'uliya listen please carefully and then quran speaks about two types of accountabilities please listen carefully two types of accountabilities two types of mas'uliya two types of responsibility question one is your own actions what you do yourself that's all no amazingly quran also speaks about communal responsibility responsibility as a society ah very interesting in other words i will narrate for you i will read for you recite for you some of those verses of quran very clear sometimes quran speaks about your individual actions kullu insanin alzamnahu ta'iruhu fi unuqi and we will hang your namay amal your book of bu- your book of amal and deeds in your neck 
हाँ यू विल बी एबल टू रीड एक रा किताब सो एवरीबडी ओके वट आई डिड वट आई डिड वट आई डिड वट आई डिड वट इज देयर इन फ्रंट ऑफ मी लाइक दैट इज अ बुक बट देन ऑल्सो कुरान स्पीक्स अबाउट अबाउट सर्टन थिंग्स विच यू डिड नॉट डू इट विच यू डिड नॉट डू इट बट यू विल बी आस्कड अबाउट दोज थिंग्स हाँ हाउ दैट इज पॉसिबल येस इट इज पॉसिबल येस इट इज पॉसिबल कुरान से इट इज पॉसिबल कुरान सेज वाला था जेरो वाजेरा विदरा उखरा नो बडी विल कैरी द बर्डन ऑफ नो बडी इफ आई हैव डन समथिंग रॉन्ग आई एम रेस्पॉन्सिबल इफ यू हैव डन समथिंग बैड यू आर रेस्पॉन्सिबल आई विल नॉट कैरी यू आर बर्डन येस दैट इज इंडिविजुअल वन बट देन देर आर सम बर्डन विच वी नीड टू कैरी फॉर इच अदर हाँ लेट मी रीड फॉर यू दिस आयत फ्रॉम सूरह मुबारक का ये जासिया वे आर ऑल माइट अल्लाह सुबहान हूँ वाला से स्पीकिंग अबाउट डे ऑफ क्यामत वट इट से वरा कुल्ल उम्मिन जासिया كُلُّ أُمَّةٍ تُدْعَى إِلَى كِتَابِهَا الْيَوْمَ تُجْزَوْنَ مَا كُنْتُمْ تَحْمَلُونَ وَتَرَى كُلُّ أُمَّةٍ جَاسِيَةً and in that day you will see every individual no every nation please listen carefully every nation jasiya means kneeling on his knees that day in the day of qiyamah every nation will be called towards its book towards its book alyam tajzauna mama kuntum mama kuntum ta'malun today you as a nation will be given will be rewarded for what you have done allahu akbar today you will be rewarded what you have done in this world now this is a different one my brother in other words quran is saying that you will be responsible for yourself and also you will be responsible for your nation so in other words you will get two books there two accounts there one account is your own account your personal account and other account is your nations your community in which you live please listen carefully another verse let me read for you and it's very important for you almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah mubarak anfal verse number 25 wattaqu fitnatan la tusiban alladhina zalamu minkum khaza i really need attention of you brothers please listen carefully how clearly quran is saying wattaqu fitnatan لا تصيبن الذين ظلموا منكم خاصة وعلموا إن الله شديد العقاب. And be aware, be aware, be known to you that a punishment will not only or shall not only visit the wrongdoers among you exclusively. No, it will come to all of you. you cannot say but i didn't do it you didn't do it but you were part of a society and a community where it was happening and you did not do anything you kept quiet so you cannot say i did not do it quran is so clear wattaqu fitna be aware of that calamity be aware of that trouble and problem which will not hit which will not affect only those who have committed wrong but it will affect everybody again i give you example if you are traveling in a boat in a ship huh, and one of the people who are in the ship if they make hole in the ship in the boat huh, what will happen who will be drawn whole ship will come down na huh? whole ship will be drawn now you cannot say that why i must be drawn but i did not make hole in the ship this guy is the one who made boat in the boat you know in the in the ship you know hole and therefore you know what we call it he he must be drawn not me no you cannot say or for example in a building 
in a in a apartment block you are living now one person in that apartment block is not careful he is not careful what he does he makes fire in his house in his flat and he makes fire without any care and slowly this fire catches the building now who is going to hurt who is going to be in trouble only this person or whole building ha huh? whole building all the flats but poor people they didn't do anything but they will have to carry the burden of somebody now quran is saying clearly like in this dunya sometimes sometimes action of some people result in the trouble for a lot of other people remember in qiyamah also similar situation is there if there are some people who doing something very bad and you do not worry about them like in flat in apartment if you did not stop that guy who was making fire in his flat if you did not stop that person who was making hole in the boat full boat full ship full building will burn down and will be drown similarly remember similarly remember that if in you live in a society where situation is going so bad that if nobody reacts and responds to it the whole society will be drawn now here responsibility is to react and respond this is important ha salawat ala muhammad wa ali muhammad ha shahid shahid ayatullah muhammad baqir sadr rizwanullah alay this great philosopher this great thinker of our century in his sunan tarikh fil quran he says quran believes listen please carefully few sentences inshallah will try to con- conclude soon he says that according to quran you me and you ha huh, individual got a life like got a life ha huh? like for example you got a life of 60 years 70 years inshallah 80 years inshallah 100 years inshallah 200 years but you that's your life ha huh? but quran says le kulli ummatin ajalun not only each one of you have life every nation also got a life every ummat also got a life le kulli ummatin ajalun iza ja ajaluhum la yastaqdimun wa la yastakhirun if the time of the death of this ummat came no can nobody can pull it nobody can you know delay it you cannot make it early you cannot make it delayed and late means what that like we as one one people individuals have a life span of 70 years 80 years 90 years 100 years 50 years for whatever similarly nations umma communities also have life period so like we as one person are living therefore ummat is also a living entity so if we do something wrong as one person we are responsible in front of allah and when we do as a nation something wrong also we are responsible in front of allah this is a core concept in quran quran explains it over and over salawat ala muhammad wa ali muhammad ha now let me take you to karbala let me take you in service of maula and master sayyid ash shuhada aba abdullah al husain alayhi salatu wassalam last night what i said i said according to husain yazid and bani umayya are pharaohs firaun 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 and tonight in the light of what i explained to you imam hussain wants to say that if we don't stop this firaun from doing what he is doing then we also will be responsible we also will be partner in this corruption and fasad and injustice and oppression this is my message tonight brothers and sisters imam hussain's 
taught Imam Hussain, message is this, that if we see that community, society in which we live is going in a wrong direction and we don't do anything, we don't react and respond, then we are responsible in the day of Qiyamah. Please. Imam Hussain alayhi salatu was salam, salamullahi alayhi arwahu nafida. If he wanted to keep his own iman, it was possible without fighting with Bani Umayyah. It was possible. I can tell you, I can explain to you. When Imam Hussain alayhi salatu was salam left Medina, arrived Makkah, you know, there were people who have this type of thinking, what to do with us, with society, what is happening, what to do with us. They came to Imam Hussain. Imam Hussain stayed quite a long period in Medina, Makkah, sorry. Imam Hussain left 28th of Rajab, 60 years after Hijrah from Medina. Arrived, according to the reports of narrations, 3rd of Sha'ban in Makkah. From 3rd of Sha'ban, until almost 8th of Zilhajjah, you can count, Imam Hussain lived in Makkah. And Imam Hussain received the people from different parts of Muslim world who were coming to perform Hajj over these months. And he being grandson of the Prophet, he being the most dignified affluent, influential, important, prestigious personality of the Ummah. When people enter Mecca and they realize Imam Hussain is around, they say, okay, let us go and visit grandson of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. One after one, group after group, caravan after caravan are coming to visit Imam Hussain alayhi salatu wasalam at his residence in Mecca. What Imam Hussain was saying? Imam Hussain was saying to them, Ala tarawna anna al haqqa la yu'malu bih wal batila la yutnaha anha. Are you people blind? Don't you see that truth is not practiced? Batil is not being forbidden. Rulers are corrupt. What Imam Hussain said already in Medina, inshallah we will reach. From another angle, we will discuss in detail. When, you know, Imam Hussain refused to pay allegiance, you people, most of you know, I have narrated, you have heard the story, I don't want to go back. Listen carefully, so beautiful it is really. When Imam Hussain was asked to pay bayat and allegiance to Yazid, Imam Hussain said, no, I will never pay allegiance. Next day, Marwan, that terrible character, that horrible character, enemy of Ahlul Bayt. He got Imam Hussain in the street and he said to Imam Hussain, Imam Hussain, you don't know Yazid how cruel he is. You don't know Hussain how merciless he is. I would like to advise you that you must pay allegiance to him. You know what Imam Hussain said to Marwan? He said, Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. When you recite this verse, huh? tell me my brothers and sisters, when you recite this verse, inna lillah wa inna ilai rajaun, when you recite, huh? when somebody dies, Imam Hussain recite this verse on death of Islam. Inna lillah wa inna ilayhe rajaun. Wa ala al-islam salama. We must make, you know, if I want to uh, translate it freely and frankly in our today's language, we must make Fatiha of Islam. Wa ala al-islam salama. We must say salam, goodbye to Islam. Wa ala al-islam salama. 
Why? Why Hussain saying that Islam is dead? Is Qadbuliyatil Umma Biraain Misla Yazid? Because Ummat is involved with a leadership like Yazid. Allah Akbar. If a community's leader, if community's leader is a person like Yazid, then Islam finished, then Islam dead, and we cannot keep quiet. We cannot sit silent. No. If Imam Hussain was protecting his own Iman, my brother, please listen carefully. In Mecca, as I said, some people came to Imam Hussain. When Imam Hussain was saying, Yazid is like that, Bani Umayyah is like that, how they are destroying Islam. You know what people said? People said, Imam Hussain, you can migrate to Yemen, mountains of Yemen. Why? Because people of Yemen love Ahlul Bayt. Because people of Yemen love Ahlul Bayt. You know why? Because people of Yemen accepted Islam and on whose hand? Mawla Amir al-Mumineen alayhi salatu wa salam. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. People of Yemen, they love Ahlul Bayt. So you go to Yemen. You go to Yemen. You don't have to fight with Yazid. You don't have to clash. You don't have to get into conflict. No. Yazid is not going to worry with you. You also don't have to come in trouble. But the problem is with Imam Hussain. That it means that Imam Hussain must become indifferent to the society. Imam Hussain must become Somebody who is not worried about Ummah. He is only worried about himself. He is only worried about his own Iman. Okay, I will protect my Iman. And in fact, let me tell you something. Yazid did not stop people from fasting. Yazid did not stop people from coming to Hajj. Yazid did not stop people from making namaz. Yazid did not stop people from paying zakat. No, all these things were going on. But Imam Hussain could see that where Yazid and Bani Umayyah as a whole, always don't mix it, huh? Yazid is only symbol. In this Shajarai Khabisa, much more worse than Yazid are present. Salawat ala Muhammad wa Muhammad. Yazid only exposed himself. Yazid only exposed himself. But if you go in the line of forefathers of Yazid, then you will realize, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Oh. Imam Hussain said, no, 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 no. No, I can't keep quiet. I can't take silence. I can't be indifferent now, my brothers and sisters. This is core message of Quran. Kullukum mas'oolun wa kullukum ra'in. All of you have responsibility toward your society, toward your community, toward your people. Message of Imam Hussain was clear. You cannot be indifferent. You cannot be insensitive. You cannot be silent toward what is going on in society. This is the concept of Quran flourishing in Karbala. And on this principle, Imam Hussain took his stand and took this decision to perform ultimate sacrifice, to rescue the Ummah, to rescue the Ummah. Allahu Akbar. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. And in the light of the same, I would like to also draw your attention, brothers and sisters. If we are followers of Hussein, if we are lovers of Hussein, we can never be indifferent, we can never be insensitive toward what is happening around us. Responsibility, social responsibility, communal responsibility. If you Follow Hussein. 
how Hussein could not see. You know, I don't have time, Allahu Akbar. You know, that khutbah, inshallah, in coming nights, maybe it will come, where Imam Hussein explains, you know, Imam Hussein says, Oh Allah, we, I did not come out for the popularity, for creating trouble and fitna and mischief in Oman. No, no, no. I came out to revive your deen. Amazing is these sentences, Allahu Akbar, of Sayyidu Shahada. Imam Hussain said, I came out, Allahu Akbar, to rescue Mazloom Ibadik. This is sentence. Huh? I came out to offer my blood, to rescue, to save your oppressed servants, Ya Allah, to liberate them from the yoke of the oppression and justice of Bani Umayyah. How they enslaved you. I came out for that purpose. Now I, I am saying if we are Husseini, if we are really, really followers of Aba Abdullah and Sayyidu Shuhada, Hussein ibn Ali alayhi salatu was salam, we cannot be in a society while we don't worry about that society, while we are indifferent about society, while we have nothing to do with injustice in society, when we have nothing to do with corruption in society, when we have nothing to do with evil going on in society. No. Husseini is always awake and Husseini is always concerned. And Husseini is always responsible about what is happening. Husseini cannot sleep while his neighbor is hungry. Husseini, Husseini can never relax when there are so many people suffering. Allahu Akbar. This is Quranic concept flourished in Sirat of Imam Hussein. And to do that, that is the next topic, inshallah. Very clearly, Imam Hussain said to his wasiyat to his brother Muhammad ibn Hanafiya. When he said, Inni lam akhruj ashran wala bataran, waza la zaliman wala mufsidan, bal innama talabtu, innama kharajtu, letalab al islahi fi ummat jaddi. I did not come out to trouble. I did not come out seeking power. I did not come out for, you know, popularity. I did not come out to create fasad. Innama kharajtu. I came out for one purpose. What is that? Innama. Innama is kalibatul hasra in Arabic. Means only and only. Littalabil islah fi ummat jaddi. I came out for the reform of my grandfather's ummah. Urid an amura bil maruf wa anha anil munkar. I want to enjoin good and forbid evil. And in this journey, I am following who? Asiro besirat jaddi wa abi. And in this path of Amr bil Maruf and Hayyan al Munkar, I'm following Seerat, lifestyle of my grandfather Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and my father Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salatu wa salam. And Hussein. Inshallah, how he did this job, Inshallah, another discussion. For tonight, I wanted to just discuss this aspect. Responsibility of Ummah. Aba Abdullah al Hussein, Sayyid al Shuhada, alayhi salatu was salam, as Maqatil have narrated. On 2nd of Muharram, 61 year after Hijra, Allahu Akbar, arrived in a place 
which was not known. And Imam Hussain, Salamullah alayhi, Sayyidu Shuhada, he stopped there and asked people around, some villages, some small settlements there, for the name of this land. Allahu Akbar. Some of the companions or family members went to look for us. They got somebody, they said, what is the name of this land? They gave name of Nainawa. Allahu Akbar. Imam Hussain asked, is there any other name? They said, because it's not far from Farat, they also call it Shaktul Farat. Imam Hussain asked, is it any other name? They replied with another name. Imam is still insisted, is there any other name for this land? Allahu Akbar. It is at that point someone says, this is Karbala. Allahu <laughs> Akbar. This is Karbala. And as soon as Imam Hussain Sayyid Shuhada heard this word Karbala, he said, okay, we arrived. How now? This is the land. We will land. We will camp. This is the land where our blood will be. This is the land where our bodies will be smeared and cut. This is the land on our bodies, Allahu Akbar. Horses will be running over our bodies. One of the narrators says, Allahu Akbar. Brothers and sisters, with your permission, let me also. Allahu Akbar. Say a few words in Urdu for our Urdu is speaking brothers for Masaib, inshallah. Assalamu alaykum ya Aba Abdullah. Wa ala al arwah illati hallat bi fanaik. Mira salamu apare Sayyidu Shuhada ay Aba Abdullah. Makatil al likaike jabis manzil par. Imam ki sabari aai, to Imam ke ghode ne, Imam ki sabari ne, aage bhande se inkar kar di tha. Ek jumla arz karna hai, arz-e masaib ka aur zahmat hai tamam. Do maqam aise hai, Allahu Akbar, jahaan par Imam Hussain ke گھوڑے نے امام حسین کی سواری نے ذل جنا نے حرکت کرنے سے انکار کیا ہے باوجود اس کے کہ امام حسین نے کوشش کی کہ یہ آگے بڑھیں لیکن گھوڑے نے آگے بڑھنے سے انکار کر دیا ایک یہ منزل تھی دو محرم کی منزل کہ اس منزل پہ پہنچنے کے بعد گھوڑے نے آگے بڑھنے سے انکار کر دیا یہاں تک کہ جیسا میں نے ابھی انگلیش میں عرض کیا امام نے جواب پوچھا اس زمین کا نام کیا ہے اور جب سنا کربلا تو کہا ہم اپنی منزل پر پہنچ گئے یہاں خیمے لگائے جائیں گی یہاں ہمارے گردنیں قطع کی جائیں گی یہاں ہمارے جسم کے ٹکڑے کیے جائیں گے یہاں اس سرزمین پر ہمارے لاشے جلتی ہوئی ریت پر اللہ اکبر یہ ایک وہ مقام تھا بس اور ایک اور ایسی جگہ بھی آئی اسی کربلا کی تاریخ میں جہاں حسین کے گھوڑے نے حسین کے زلجنہ نے آگے بڑھنے سے انکار کر دیا اور وہ کونسی منزل تھی وہ آشور کے اثر کی منزل تھی 
जब हुसैन करबला के मैदान में अकेले और तनहा रह गए थे और जब आगे जाने की कोशिश कर रहे थे घोड़ा हिलने को तैयार नहीं था जुलझना आगे हरकत करने को तैयार नहीं था एक मरतबा हुसैन ने जुलझना से मुखातिब हो के कहा ऐ जुलझना क्यों हरकत नहीं करता अब जुलझना ने कुछ नहीं कहा एक मरतबा मौला ने जो आगे बढ़कर देखा तो घोड़े के कदमों में हुसैन की बेटी अल्लाह अकबर सकीना अरे बाबा हलिसम तलिल मौत आज मौत के सामने तस्लीम हो गए हमें अब कहा और किसके पास छोड़ के जा रहे हो अला قوم الظالمين سيعلم الذين ظلموا ايمن قلب ينقلبون